This session is going to introduce you to some basic concepts you need to understand when using charts in Microsoft Excel. We're going to talk about the first basic kind of chart, which is just a basic bar chart. Now I have some sample data here. We've got three products, Apple, Light, and Cats, and five rounds, round one to round five. And we're looking at the profit for each product by each round. Now when I look at this, it's important to understand there's really six different ways I can make what looks like a very simple bar chart. Let me go ahead and zoom out on my example down here. This screen shows you the six different ways I can show the same exact data using a bar. We have product version, sorry, profit version A over here on the left, B, C, D, E, and F. And we're going to talk about the, the different ways this is showing the data and why you'd want to pick one or the other. So first off, how do we do the basic selection? So whenever we do a chart inside of Excel, it's usually a good idea to leave this upper left corner blank. The reason we do that is it helps Excel understand what things are going to be labels and what things are actually data. Let me give you an example. Let's say I've got a simple little piece of data here that's going to have the year and profit. So we have the year of 2010. I'm going to do a little formula to have a couple little bit of data here and then some profit. Now, when I look at this, usually what I probably want to have is a chart that shows these profit numbers with captions showing the years. But when I select this data to actually put the chart in, you'll see it doesn't quite do that. Instead, when Excel looks at this data, it's going to actually get a little bit confused and it thinks that we want to use the year as data. So if you look at this, you'll see that I have year 2010, year 2011, 2012, 2013 instead of having it as the caption down here or an access label. The way we help Excel understand how to do this is by giving it a hint. That hint is we delete the label above the first column. By deleting the label above the first column, now we can tell Excel, oh yeah, if these guys here, if this is not data, this is actually a label, and over here, that's my data. So now I'm going to do the exact same thing, insert the chart. And now you can see how now I only have one series of data being charted. I have the blue bars for profit. And now Excel accurately guessed that I wanted 2010, 11, 12, and 13 as the labels. All right, let's go back to the bar chart. So if you look at my data, I already have this nice little chunk taken out up here just to help Excel understand that these are going to be labels down below. And then to insert my chart, I'm going to do a selection box go to insert and then pick to chart. Now on the PC, it looks a little bit different when you hit recommended charts, but it's the same basic idea that you're gonna have a list of charts being given to you. But even on that one, you're gonna see kind of a similar idea of the same basic kinds of charts. Now if you look at these charts here, we're gonna focus on this first row and talk about these three charts. The first one you see is called clustered, the second one's called stacked, and the third one's called stacked 100%. The difference between them is how we're arranging the bars. In the first version, all the bars go from the top to the bottom. So everything lines up on the axis, which is this horizontal line here. On a stacked, I'm taking the data and putting them on top of each other. And in a stacked 100%, I'm putting them on top of each other, and then I'm stretching out each bar so that each bar goes all the way to the top of the chart. So let's look at how this can give you different different insights from the data. So this first version here is a clustered bar chart. You can tell it's clustered because each bar goes from the very bottom axis and up. The advantage of this kind of chart is that first off, it's really easy to understand. Pretty much everybody can look at this, figure it out, and move on. So it's, it's not very hard at all to be able to play with. Now, when I look at this, there's actually two ways to organize it. I could organize it either with Apple first, all the apples together, all the blights together, all the cats together, or I could reverse it, I can organize it by round. So now the first round's together, second round's together, third's together, fourth together, and fifth together. And both of these have the same basic structure, but they tell a different story. The first one makes it a lot easier to understand how each product did over the course of the five rounds. I can look at apple and really easily see the apples going up and it has a little bit of a drop. I can see blight starts strong, but then gets weaker. And I can see cats is kind of inconsistent. So this kind of chart is great when you want to think about the overall product 
as a whole. If you want to be able to say, Apple went up, light went down, cats was inconsistent, this is the right chart to use. The other version is better when you're talking about rounds. So if you look at this one, it's a lot harder to compare Apple. If you look at the, I got blue, 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 which I can do, but it's just more difficult to kind of see that same trend on this one. What this does a lot better than the other version though, is it helps me see how did each round go. So in round one, I can easily compare Blight to the other products and say, oh yeah, Blight did great. And then round two, I can look at it, round three, round four. So this is when we're talking about rounds as the primary idea versus this one up here, which talks about cats or Blight or Apple as the primary idea. Now, how do we make this these different versions? Well, the way we're gonna make them is just do the data first, right? So I put one chart in. After I put the chart in, I'm gonna select it with my mouse which gives me these two new ribbons up here. Now when I click on those ribbons, I see a bunch of options. The one that I want you to play with though is called switch, row, and column. When I switch the row and column, you'll see that it switches from apple, blight, and cat to round one, two, three, four, five. And we can toggle it back and forth. So that's the basic bar chart. Again, we're calling that one clustered because it all goes from the very bottom axis all the way to the top. Let's talk about stack now. For a stack chart, we're gonna do the same thing before. We're gonna select our data. We're gonna to go to insert charts, and we're gonna choose the second option here called stack column. The advantage of a stack column chart is that now it makes it easy for me to see the total. So this one, it's hard for me to look at Apple and say, how did Apple do each year? Because it's difficult to compare you know, this blue versus that green or this red versus that blue. But what I can do really easily is say, what's the total for Apple versus the total for Blight? I could just add all these up and use a single bar, but doing a stack gives me a little more information on the makeup of each of these pieces. So again, so stacked is for when I want to talk about the totals. If I ask you to give me a chart saying, how well did Apple did as a total versus Blight and Cats? This is the right one. Now, just with the previous version clustered, we can also do another version of this one too. Imagine I want to talk about how well did sales go in round one, round two, round three. Well, I'm just going to do the pivot again. Now I can see all around one sales versus all around two sales, round three, round four, round five. And now I can look at this and see really clearly, oh, hey, round one, we had lower sales, but the overall sales went up in round two and then dropped again. So again, this is great for you to want to talk about the total. If you want to say the total sales on round one, this is the right chart to use. If you want to say the total sales for Apple, this is the right chart to use. And toggle between the two, we're going to click on it, go to chart design, and again, do switch row and column. Now the last kind of chart is the one that's most often confused gene for people. This is very similar to the previous, which is stacked, except now the axis changes. If you look at the axis here, you see it goes from 0% to 100% versus the one on the left side, which is using dollars. What's happening is that the columns are being stretched out. In other words, you almost can think of it like little tiny pie charts. Each pie chart shows the total percentage and lets you compare them back and forth. Now you have to be really careful with these. Apple versus Blight versus Cat, you can only make comparisons if you're talking about the relative proportion or the share of those. In other words, I can't look at Apple in round five and say that Apple had more sales in round five than Blight had in round five. Because all I can really say is that as a percentage of Apple sales, round five was bigger versus as a percentage of Blight sales, five was bigger but you can't compare left or right for any absolute numbers. You have to use the word relative or percentage or something like that to be able to make this a good comparison. Now, why is this useful? This is useful if you're trying to compare things that have different magnitudes or different values. Imagine, for example, you're trying to compare Apple stocks versus a penny stock. Well, Apple stock sells for $100, so you can't really put them on the same chart. However, if you do this method, you could actually put like Apple shares here and maybe a dividend or some of this kind of information like that in this kind of chart form because now you're sort of normalizing it. You're looking at it as a percentage rather than the actual dollar figure. 
And again, for this one, you have the same option as before. We can go to that chart design and do the switch row column. And then we can change it from round to product. And looking at the round is actually really interesting. Now before, if you look at my, my regular stack chart, you can see that sales in round one were lower than sales in round two. But what if I want to say, not the absolute value of light in either of those, but as a percentage of the market share for round one or round two, how well did blight do? It's harder to see it with this chart because the magnitude, the total value is different. If I come over here though, I can really easily see, oh yeah, in this first example, blight did really well overall. It got something like 60 something percent of the market, but in this one, it lost a lot of market share. So again, it's a way of sort of like holding apart the, the overall volume of the market to be able to show a percentage. So go ahead and take a break now and try to do the six basic charts with the data that you see down here.